The recent developments regarding the XRP ledger will be discussed in this episode, along with the 30 million additional users that have the potential and likelihood of visiting the ledger. We will also hear we're going to examine the fiat leak and XRP's ramping up from Mark Cuban, so let's get started with a Bitcoin discussion right away. $67,341 with Ethereum trading at 2635 and down 2.86% over the last day. It is currently down 1.52%. Since XRP is only 53 cents, USDT and USDC both stay at their 99 cent pegs. Everyone, keep an eye on Sarena. It keeps rising without anyone even mentioning it. I have been advocating for the purchase of Salana since I was in the neighborhood of $100. We buy it till the LDCA is struck when the DCA is hit. I wish I had more, but you are aware of my rules on this channel. We cease purchasing, so occasionally we only purchase a cryptocurrency once, and it rises sharply and never falls again, it is the only purchase we make for Salana. I managed to persuade roughly 4 or 5 different purchases. My dollar cost average is far below what we are. Cost, so if we have a big dip back down and they scoop some more up, I won't be purchasing any more of Salana at this time. Salana is an easy 10x I adore watching fiat leaks, therefore I'm telling on that one they released. They say XRP after examining all of the XRP moves. Season and heightened whale activity as the last 12 hours have seen an intensification of Ripple's legal dispute with the SEC whale activity and a substantial surge in Ripple's XRP indicate that investors are becoming more interested in the company ahead of its continuing legal battle with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The state we are still higher than the prices we saw over the summer, and XRP is currently trading at about 54.5 cents, indicating a modest recovery of about 2% over the past week. Keep in mind that it states that the spike in whale activity, with over 35,700 unique wallets transferring in a single day, indicates that investors are strategically positioning themselves in anticipation of major market developments. Moreover, in an attempt to contest the $125 million fine levied for the fictitious complaint, Ripple filed a cross-appeal against the SEC. The two-bit moron is back at it. I won't go into detail about what he said since, if you understand, it's a little rated R. However, he claims that XRP has always been a worthless currency that was utilized to defraud individual consumers while fabricating its significance in banking applications. From here, stablecoins will take over. Interestingly, XRP is dying. Since Ripple has a stablecoin that operates on an extra ledger, it must use XRP since all transactions utilizing the ledger must use XRP. However, the query still stands. During the little interview that Brad Gallinghouse and Tubit Idiot conducted, I believe at this stage, two years ago, how much did Ripple pay him to change his mind? If he's acting this way and the vet claims that Glenn Masari ejected you from David Schwartz's podcast block, you know we got paid at this point. Stars you love the XRP very much. Ripple and Ledger you're a complete fraud, said Link I've always liked technology, but I never understood XRP. Its main purpose is to as Branch Off points out, what is Ethereum doing because it's there to enrich Follick? That makes Chris intriguing. What about ADA? I believe that's how it works, people, and everyone is concerned. Isn't that out there to enrich Hopkins? Isn't that what happens when you're the inventor of a fantastic product that people are using and the creator or founder of it gets rich from it? Regarding Chris Larson, he gave $10 million, or 3% of his net worth, even though he already has $3.1 billion. 3% are unconcerned about how the French strike. CEO Jack, Ms. Yes, everyone's favorite conversation, let's take a brief look at Bitcoin versus the US dollar, so what are you able to look into the future? The immediate and long-term prospects you see for Bitcoin this is costing hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin, my goodness. Charles the US government is so indebted, in my opinion, based on the price of Bitcoin. Technology plus fiat liquidity equals Bitcoin's price, so it will rise because of its innovative technology and better money. 
However, what causes it to rise at an unstoppable rate is our government's tens of trillions of dollars in debt, which means they have a lot of money to print and financial assets will plummet. Bitcoin rises the most because it's the hardest to make more of it, man, and this thing is going to the moon, you know, it's so interesting because it's not just the US I just read about the world today. These developed nations with all this fiat money will have to spend $2 trillion only on interest, and they won't stop spending, I guess. They simply won't stop spending money, and it keeps flowing back, Jack. To haunt them, and it is returning to Charles, perhaps people are understanding that fiat money isn't the place to be. This is my message to America, please give me guys, give me a moment. The United States over the next two years, the government will have roughly $1 trillion to roll over and refinance the debt owed by our nation. It's a serious issue. They have three options. One is to repay it, but that isn't a realistic choice because we don't have the money and are broke. Two is for our government to step in and say, you know, Charles. After World War II, we made a big mess of these folks. We revolutionized the financial system. Left the gold standard, we started issuing debt everywhere, and we were overconfident. Additionally, none of our banks have your money, they are all solvent, and none of the airlines you fly with or go on are truly respectable companies that ought to be healthcare shouldn't be free in the business world because we made a mistake, accrued a lot of debt, mistreated the younger generation, and are currently in serious problems. As a result, we will have to let everything collapse and restart our nation. They have a third choice, Charles, so they won't do it now. In a way that is exclusive to the government, they can print the money that they are missing, which constitutes theft. From everyone who owns U.S. dollars, so they will have to print dollars. The only way to save yourself is with your own money, not dollars. At that point, you will notice that the S&P 500, gold, and Bitcoin all drop, and that's what will happen over the next two years. Greater than what they did during Kochar's passion for love, Jack, you're heading to the moon, so hold on tight. Trump is correct when he states that the U.S. will become the global center for cryptocurrency and that XRP is the only coin with clear regulations. That's about it. I suppose we could also say that Bitcoin has regulatory clarity. Only those two remain cognizant of the SEC, won't talk about Ethereum, so cryptocurrency assets with clear regulations are essential for the capital world. I'm not even sure if there are two, but I suppose we can argue that there is one official due to the litigation. However, as the SEC chose Bitcoin, have they essentially let us decide for ourselves? Keep it in mind. A billionaire speaking of Kala Harris's proposed unrealized gains tax, Mark Queen well, Mark, wake up. He claims that I would run a campaign against Hillary to prevent a second term. She's going to do that for four years. Since she has already declared that she will do this, why are you currently running for office? As an entrepreneur, businessman, or millionaire, you can only imagine the amount of money you will be earning annually from unrealized capital gains from your assets. Is incomprehensible to a man such as yourself. Should not cast a ballot for someone like could you imagine, her parents, if we over-receive taxes and unrealized capital gains in the United States? What does that signify? Permit me to let me put it this way, if you have a retirement account, you are investing in the stock market. Simply name the S&P 500, and if you have $100,000 in it that year, you get 10% as the S&P 500 rises. Never touch this, even if you make $110,000. She will tax you on the $10,000 you earned, so either take this money out or give it to her. She's going to go back in and make you pay tax on that 10% even if you're not touching that money because you'll receive another penalty for taking money out of your account too soon. If this thing goes down again, you'll still be responsible for paying the tax. It makes sense, doesn't it? We are thrilled to announce the launch of the XRP Ledger Snap for MetaMask today, and yeah, it doesn't make sense. This is the big announcement that came out, I mean, we're talking about something huge, that says to persevere. MetaMask's 30 million monthly active users are now only a click away. 
Apart from having an account on the XRP Ledger, SNAP offers a special chance for the adoption and administration of XRP Ledger assets in the world's most popular cryptocurrency wallet. It has all the features that are currently present in the XRP Ledger mainnet and testnet, and any D app can integrate it to connect and sign transactions. I installed this yesterday, and after testing the NFT, I was able to view it after approximately 5 seconds. I simply need to make sure that the XRP ledger is visible when we open the MetaMask and figure out how we can move the NFTs from the MetaMask wallet. It works like a freaking com. Displaying the wallet in this picture I was just experimenting and fooling around, so I didn't go into it. You can see the MetaMask was brought up from over there, which is significant because when we look at people, MetaMask has 30 million monthly active users and is linked to nearly all Web3 dApps available. Imagine if we could only convince 1% of those individuals to the ledger for XRP many people's disinterest or lack of interest in XRP stemmed from their desire to stick with MetaMask and avoid opening numerous wallets. Can we still bring them over with that MetaMask wallet now? This is a major victory since they are accustomed to what they know. Adoption is accelerated in this way. Pay attention to these people.